So then by 1999, you got back into it. You got back in the indie circuit again. I had to feed myself somehow. Well, there was a match that you had with Bundy. Yeah. Where you were so drunk you couldn't even really stand up. Right. What happened with that whole situation? Uh, we were at a casino, and uh, I just got out of control. And uh, went out and made a total ass of myself, as we do. Well, that same year, the documentary Beyond the Mat. Yeah, which out. was bullshit. You know, I watched it this morning before the interview. Um, I mean, the part with your daughter, uh, that that was really, you know, kind of a very deep moment. You know, having her actually show up and talk about right. your past relationship. And, I, you know, it seemed that she really loved you, though. It seemed like oh, yeah. she really was was trying to make it work with you. Yeah, we have. We finally won. You know, she lives with me now. Oh, really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That was your oldest daughter? Who was yeah, she works for me and lives with me. Okay. But in that same documentary, there was a scene in there where even though they don't show it, the, the narrator basically said that you, you went and smoked crack. Well, that. that was a lie. Okay. He lied several mm -hmm. times in that documentary. Right, I heard you and a lot of people were upset over that documentary. You damn right I was. Yeah. Was that the first time that the crack, you know, story was was put into the public? I'm not sure. Okay, but it was still a big platform to actually put that out there. Sure, it was. It, it made he he was trying to sell his movie. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, you talked about in that documentary how, you know, you wanted to be a father and, you know, people ask, hey, you know, you're rich. Why not take off three months and just focus on your kids? But you said that, you know, working for Vince McMahon, you had to work every day. And if you took three months off, you'd be fired. And the yeah. next person would come in. Yeah. Did that pretty much, I mean, and that didn't just apply to you. That applied to all Everybody. the wrestlers. Yeah. So... Were all the wrestlers struggling with the same family problems that you were going through? Sure they were. Yeah. You know, when I interviewed New Jack, uh, he was never in the WWE or WWF. No. But he, ha he had some words about Vince McMahon. He called Vince McMahon a piece of shit. And he said that, a lot of wrestlers died under his watch and he never had to pay the price for any of it. It's true. So you agree with that? Yes. Okay. And I remember there was a, I forgot what it was. It was either Real Sports or 60 Minutes. It was that interview where the interviewer actually confronted Vince McMahon about that and Vince kind of like like hit him, you know, hit the, the paper out of his hand. He was so upset. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, what's your take on that? Because it's not like anyone was being drug tested in the WWE, right? Not in the beginning, no. Okay. So I'm sure the steroid, you know, abuse yeah. was pretty heavy. Yeah. You yourself, did you take steroids? Yeah. Okay. What age did you start? Oh, probably 30. Okay. A little bit later on. Yeah. Was every other wrestler pretty much taking steroids as well? Pretty much. Okay. And with that came heart attacks, also came with roid rage and right. domestic abuse right. and suicides and right. everything else like that. You know, what did you see, you know, when it comes to the whole steroid oh, culture? It was fucking in insane, WWF? man. It was insane. But the guys that were doing the steroids were being rewarded. Yeah. You know, they were getting the top spots. The ultimate warrior, look at him. My God. He died at 50. Yeah. Too many guys have died, man. Way too many. Yeah. Well, uh, by 2005, at age 50, you actually came back to the WWE again. And that was when you uh, had the match with uh, Randy Orton? That wasn't a match. It was an interview. It was an interview. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. 
And how was that whole situation when you came back again? Well, I came back and he was doing the thing where he was not knocking off uh, all the all the legends. So I went out to the ring and he basically tricked me, grabbed me, and did his finishing maneuver on me and left me laying. Mm-hmm. That's all. Okay, and that was it. Is it? Okay, and that next year you went to a total nonstop action wrestling. Uh, yeah, for a wedding. For a wedding, exactly. And uh, you got remarried again that year to Judy Lynn. Yep. Marriage number three. Yep. How's that marriage? It lasted six months. Six months? Yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Too much. She was too much. It was just too much, man. I couldn't deal with her. She was crazy. Okay. And that was your final marriage at that point? Yeah, at that point, right? Except now yep. I'm about to get remarried. Oh, marriage number four now. Yeah. All right. to marriage to number two. Oh, to your second wife. Yeah, to Cheryl. Okay. Hey, I like it, man. You're a hopeless romantic, you know? Yeah, man. We've been divorced 24 years, and uh, we're more in love now than we were then. I love it. I Sobriety love it. does magic, man. I'm sure it does. Well, by 2007, uh, you actually performed at the Juggalo Championship Wrestling League. Yeah. Is that like a real league, or is it just no. something that the ICP just kind of threw together? That's something ICP threw together. Okay. Um, how's that situation? Oh, it's horse shit. <laughs> Total horse shit. 